All right, what is good, y'all? Welcome to week six in the mix here for Cine 399 South Park and Society. I'm the real Dr. Dre, a.k.a. DJ Food Stamp, a.k.a. Andre. Here at the homestead, chilling at the barn, doing the thing-a-ling. And this is the week here where we talk about PC culture, PC gentrification, and advertising. And we're going to focus primarily on season 19 of South Park from 2015. Uh, it was one of my favorite seasons. I really enjoyed the shit out of it. Um, it was just a good, it, overall a pretty good season. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about it. You know, this is, this, is, this is like probably the most important week where it is to have a conversation. Uh, to have a dialogue of sorts, right? And that, that shit ain't happening um, with this format. I mean, it just is what it, it is. What it is. Uh, but, you know, if y'all want to discuss this, like, as a group, I think we should. Um, and I'm down, too, to set up something. I just didn't want to make a lot of extra work in mandatory discussion things and stuff like that for you and for me to be to be honest um but maybe maybe i can get a little extra ins extra inspiration next week for our crappy hour at five for people to come and join maybe we can talk about this stuff a little bit because i think you know when you start talking about specifically about pc culture it's just real valuable to have y'all voices involved in this um because I'm from a different generation, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm twice your age for the most part. And, you know, PC, what is PC? What is politically correct? What is right? What is the right language? Um, it changes often. And it certainly changes between uh, generations. And, um, you know, I think it's just important to discuss. And, uh, you know, uh, because obviously as we get into this topic and we get into season 19, you know, uh, you're, the perspective about PC culture is really coming from some older dudes, older white dudes, uh, mind you, uh, cis, straight white dudes, you know, of, of financial economic privilege, you know, almost billionaires, you know, so, um, and also libertarians, you know, where, you know, but I think it does, it does create a discussion. I think that's the most important, most important thing, especially for us, you know, we're at a primarily liberal, you know, institution um, that values not of offending people with language and think it's important. And, you know, fuck yeah, it's hella important because language has meaning. And, 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 you know, I think as we'll kind of look through South Park and talk about it, it's like, how do we communicate what is right and what is wrong? How do we communicate how you should use language to talk about people, specifically marginalized groups in society, um, you know, and, and, you know, how is those rules of language, how are they enforced and how are they um, spread, you know, and, you know, obviously we have the analogy in season 19 is through like this frat bro, pushy sort of um, way, you know. And that may be your way of spreading e equity and, and political correctness, you know, or at least the perspective from some people, you know, which I think is kind of a valuable way to, to reflect upon our own PC. You PC, bro? Um, I've been PC two weeks. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we'll talk about that, and we'll talk about gentrification as well. Um, I wanted to start, though, I'd ask you to watch Death Camp of Tolerance. This is an older episode. This is, you know, in my opinion, a very uh, funny episode. Uh, it's the first time that we meet uh, Mr. Slave. It's the first time that we also meet Lemmy, Lemmy Winks, the class gerbil, who goes on an epic uh, sojourn in Mr. Slave's tight asshole. <laughs> Okay, um, but you know, he, you know, we watched a clip um, from the Museum of Tolerance um, earlier in the term, and that comes from this episode. And obviously, you know, if we look at the arc of this, you know, Mr. Garrison basically wants to get 
fired um, for being gay. And because he wants to sue the univer uh, the university. He wants to sue, uh, sun's coming out, Jesus. He wants to sue uh, the town of South Park so he doesn't have to work anymore. And um, so this is his plan to basically be as ridiculously, ridiculously is the key word, stereotypically gay. And that's where Mr. Slave comes in, you know, as this sort of S&M um, slave, uh, sex slave, um, <clears throat> total whore, you know, <laughs> uh, who wins the whore off against Paris Hilton. Um, but um, he brings Mr. Slave in to basically, you know, show that... Um, you know, that, you know, how, how, how gay he can be and get fired for it. And when the kids tell the parents about the inappropriate behavior, which is clearly inappropriate, right? Not because he's gay, but it's just clearly inappropriate. The parents don't want to do anything about it because they're afraid, afraid of being labeled intolerant. Um, and um, they call the kids intolerant and, you know, they make them go to the Museum of Tolerance where, you know, they belittle... After learning about toler intolerance, they belittle a smoker, as, as we saw out front. And then at the end, you know, Mr. Garrison is, um, you know, and Mr. Slave have to go to uh, tolerance camp um, because they're intolerant of them of themselves. They cannot tolerate themselves in a the sense. In the so, um, but really, you know, it's a pretty interesting uh, satire, though, on excessive political correctness. Now, listen. South Park has always been about free speech. South Park has always been about freedom of expression. South Park has always been not necessarily against equity um, because they have very like pro like um, you know pro same sex marriage episodes and, and things like that. I think you know I think I think the dudes are, are you know are about you know social equity in, in, in many ways, but they're against forcing people to change their language they're uh, against forcing unless it's harmful and that's the question when does language become harmful and in comedy it's it's hard to tell right because you know you you have comedians who get you know roasted Dave Chappelle etc for you know maybe intolerant views in their comedy routines that are not politically correct I mean comedy is never going to be politically correct but it's a satire on excessive political correctness that is you know basically forcing people to change how they talk and how they think um, you know as to not offend people and South Park has always offended people and always been not politically correct and that's always been part of its brand and something they've had to fight against sense censorship you know political correctness the question is can political correctness be a form of censorship okay um, but yeah, it's an allusion to Schindler's List, so um, all the black and white scenes are clearly takes on the, the film Schindler's List, um, you know, relating it to, uh, uh, you know, uh, camps like Auschwitz and, uh, you know, and internment camps and all, the, all those sorts of things, um, death camps in, in Germany uh, during World War II in Nazi Germany. Um, we have a clear parody of, of The Hobbit, and also Lord of the Rings, in, in essence, um, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing is, like, the parents actually seem to be more intolerant, um, again, of, of people. Remember, always the grown-ups are kind of like the idiots. Um, you know, they always, are the, they always seem to represent the excess, specifically Randy, um, you know. Um, but yeah, Mr. Slave and Mr. Garrison are intolerant um, of their own behavior. And what is the moral... What's the difference? Be is forced tolerance the same as acceptance? Or is tolerance in general the same as acceptance? And the moral in the story is that no, they're not. And Mr. Garrison put, er, puts this uh, moral out on blast, right? Is like there's a clear difference between tolerating and accepting people. And when, um, you know, maybe in the essence, it's kind of the episode's about when you force people to change change their language or their feelings or whatever as to not offend people or how they express their feelings through language as to not offend offend people you're in essence forcing them to tolerate um, people that are different than them but not accept so can 
political correctness or PC culture be the pathway to acceptance? Or what is the way to um, get people to change their language, their harmful, potentially harmful language, um, to get them on the path to acceptance versus toleration? And we understand that tolerance means you just deal with someone or something, right? Um, you tolerate someone smoking a cigarette next to you when you don't like it, right? But you don't accept it. God damn, the sun's getting warm. Um, I'm going to move my ass over here. <laughs> okay.